Hello everyone and welcome back. In the previous session, we learned about the hexadecimal number system. Today, we are going to learn about the conversion to decimal number system. So, without any further ado, let's get to learning. Coming to the topics that we are going to cover in this session. At first, we will learn about the conversion from binary to decimal. Thereafter, we will learn about the conversion from hexadecimal to decimal. So, let's begin with the conversion from binary to decimal. Now, in the previous sessions, when we were comparing the decimal with the binary, if you recall, I gave you a way to check whether we are converting them correctly or not using the place values. If you consider the binary 0110, which we claim to be 6, and we proved that our claim was correct by adding the place values under which the ones are placed, like we have placed 1 under 4 and 2. So, adding 4 and 2, we got the value 6. Now, coming to this table, if you notice the place values, 1, 2, 4 and 8. Now, if you go for the correct interpretation for these, these are basically the place values which should be in 2's powers. That is, 1 is going to be 2 raised to the power 0, 2 is 2 raised to the power 1, 4 is 2 squared and 8 is 2 cubed. So, at first, let's have those place values. Now, the reason we are having the place values like this is, it is proper representation. If you remember, in case of decimal, the place values were 10 raised to the power 0, 10 raised to the power 1, 10 squared, 10 cubed, and so on. Basically, 10 raised to the power 0 was the unit's place, 10 raised to the power 1 was the tens place, 10 squared was the hundreds place, and 10 cubed was the thousands place. Similarly, this time for binary, we are using that same format. Now, the shortcut trick that I showed you to find out whether our formed binary bit sequence is correct or not is actually a shortcut derived from the traditional approach of conversion of binary numbers to decimal. Let me show you how that actually works. Consider the same number 0110 of binary. Now, at first, we will take the bits and we are going to multiply those bits with their place values. Now, notice the most significant bit, that is this one, it has the place value 2 cubed. So, with 0, we are going to multiply 2 cubed. Coming to the next one, this bit has the place value 2 squared. So, with this, we will multiply 2 squared, that is its place value. Now, the next bit, that is, this bit is having the place value 2 raised to the power 1. So, we will multiply that as well. Finally, coming to the least significant bit, it has got the place value 2 raised to the power 0. So, let's multiply that as well. Now, we will add these. So, 2 cubed is being multiplied with 0. So, we will have 0 only. Now, 2 squared is 4. So, multiplying that with 1, we will get 4. Coming to the next one, that is 2 raised to the power 1. It is basically 2. So, multiplying that with 1, we will get 2 only. Finally, 2 raised to the power 0 is being multiplied with 0. So, we will have the result as 0. Observe, 0 plus 4 plus 2 plus 0 will give us 6 of decimal. And this is what we did, isn't it? We only considered the place values under which the ones are given. Because for the rest, we are simply multiplying the place values with zeros, isn't it? So, this is the traditional approach of conversion from binary to decimal. Now, there is another approach and let me walk you through that. Now, if you notice the place values, these are 2 raised to the power 0, 2 raised to the power 1, 2 squared, 2 cubed for 4-bit binary. Considering this, if we talk about an n-bit binary number, in that case, the place values are going to be 2 raised to the power 0, 2 raised to the power 1, 2 squared, 2 cubed, so on, 2 raised to the power n minus 1. Now, why n minus 1? If you notice, for a 4-bit binary, the place value of the most significant bit is 3. Notice, this is the 4th bit. And the place value here is actually 1 less than the place's number. So, for the nth bit, the place value is going to be 1 less than the place's number. Now, notice these place values. From the least significant bit's place value, if we move towards the most significant bit, 
we get the preceding place values just by multiplying 2 to the previous place value. Like in this case, with 2 raised to the power 0, if we multiply 2, we will have 2 raised to the power 1. Similarly, multiplying 2 with 2 raised to the power 1, we will get 2 squared. Then again, multiplying 2 with 2 squared, we will get 2 cubed, and this process will keep on continuing. So notice one thing, as we are shifting towards the left, we are basically multiplying the value with 2. Isn't it? Using this logic, let me convert a binary number into its equivalent decimal value. For this instance, we are going to take the binary number 1101. So let's have all the bits now. Now consider the most significant bit. It is 1. So let's have that. Now in order to place the next one in line, we will have to shift this towards the left. And now we can place it, right? So what we did? We shifted this one towards the left to make space for this one, which we placed in here. Now as I told you earlier, every time we shift to the left, we are multiplying with 2. So this one, we are actually multiplying this with 2. And then we just placed it, right? So we will add this value with this. Now you might be wondering why we are multiplying 2 with this and why we are just adding this value. Let me explain the reason. Notice the bit stream, it is 1, 1. So, for the least significant bit, the place value is 2 raised to the power 0. So, whatever we have in the least significant bits place, we will multiply that with 2 raised to the power 0 or 1. And that's the reason we are placing the least significant bit as it is. Now, coming to the most significant bit, the place value of this is 2 raised to the power 1. That is, multiplying 2 with the least significant bit's place value, we get the place value of this place. And that's the reason why we are multiplying this with 2, because we shifted this from the least significant bit to the place next to it. So, we will add 1 with this. Notice, 2 into 1 is 2, plus 1 is 3. And thus, 1 1 in binary is actually 3 in decimal. Interesting, isn't it? The concept will be more clear if we move further in this. So let's do that. Now what is the next bit? It is 0. Now in order to make space for this, we will have to shift these two. So let's do that. Now we have shifted 1 1 to the left. And now we have the space to place 0 in here. So we shifted 1 1, that is 3. Since we have shifted 3, so this time we will multiply 3 with 2. And 0, we will just add it. So we will have the value 3 into 2, that is 6, plus 0, 6. And therefore, 110 in binary is 6 in decimal. Now what is the next bit? It is 1. Now in order to make space for the least significant bit, we will have to shift all these three bits towards the left. So let's do that. Now we have got the space and we will place 1 in here. So what did we shift? We shifted 6. So 6 is going to be multiplied with 2 now. And with this value, we are going to add the least significant bits value, that is 1. So 6 into 2 is 12, plus 1 will give us 13. Therefore, 1101 in binary is going to be 13 in decimal. Also, observe, in order to find this, we also found the values of 110, that is 6, and 11, that is 3. So, the decimal equivalent of the binary number 1101 is actually 13, and we found this value instead of using the traditional approach or the shortcut trick of that using the bitwise left shift logic. So, this is how we can convert any binary number to decimal. So that was all about the conversion from binary to decimal. Let's now learn about the conversion from hexadecimal to decimal. Now in the previous slides, we have seen the place values of an n-bit binary number, haven't we? Therefore, for an n-digit hexadecimal number, what will be the place values? 
This is going to be 16 raised to the power 0, 16 raised to the power 1, 16 squared, 16 cubed, so on, 16 raised to the power n minus 1. Remember, we are talking about n digit hexadecimal number. And since there are n digits, therefore for the nth digit, the place value will have one less in the exponent. Now the question is, how to convert any hexadecimal number into decimal? Well, the answer is simple, just as we did in case of binary. Let me illustrate that using the hexadecimal number 0110. Notice it is in hexadecimal, not in binary. So what we are going to do? We will take all these digits at first. Another thing to note is in here, if you observe carefully, I'm calling them digits, not bits. Because bits is actually binary digits. Now, are these binary digits? No, they are hexadecimal digits, right? So, apart from binary, for all the other number systems, we will have to call them digits. Anyway, let's move forward. So, there are four digits of hexadecimal. And in order to get the equivalent decimal value, we will have to multiply these with their respective place values. Now, coming to the multiplication of the place values with the respective digits, it's always a good idea to begin with the least significant digit. Now, it is 0, and it is the first one from the left towards the right. So, for this, the place value is going to be 16 raised to the power 0. For this, what will be its place value? 16 raised to the power 1. For this, the place value is 16 squared. And finally, for the most significant digit, the place value is going to be 16 cubed. Now we can add them. Now 16 cubed is getting multiplied with 0, so we will have 0 as the result. Coming to the next one, we have got 16 squared, and that is 256. Multiplying that with 1, we will have 256. Coming to the next one, it is 16 raised to the power 1, so essentially 16. And we are multiplying that with 1, so we will have 16 only. Finally, 16 raised to the power 0 is getting multiplied with 0, so we will have 0. Now, 256 plus 16 will give us 272 in decimal. Notice, when 0110 was in binary, the decimal equivalent was 6. However, since this time the base is different and way bigger than binary, therefore the decimal equivalent is 272. So this is the traditional way of converting any hexadecimal number into decimal. Now in case of hexadecimal, apart from the symbols 0 to 9, we also have the symbols A, B, C, D, E and F. Therefore, when it comes to the conversion of those symbols in hexadecimal to decimal, let me show you how we are going to deal with that. Now here, it is a three-digit hexadecimal number with the symbols A, B, C. So just like the previous one, here also we will take the digits first. Notice, I'm calling them digits because they are symbols of hexadecimal number. Now there are three of them and we are going to multiply all these with their respective place values. Now this is the least significant digit. Now, what will be the place value for this? It is 16 raised to the power 0. What about B? The place value for this is going to be the one next to this one, that is 16 raised to the power 1. And for A, the place value is going to be 16 squared. Now, these are symbols which we don't have in decimal. So, we can't just go ahead and add them. In order to simplify this, we need to use the decimal equivalence of these symbols. Now, it's also easy to find them up. If you remember, A is the symbol in hexadecimal which comes after 9. Now, in case of decimal, what comes after 9? Well, it is 10. And we already have seen in the previous session that A in hexadecimal is 10 in decimal. Now, what about B? It is B in hexadecimal, although the equivalent value in decimal is 11. Then coming to C, the hexadecimal C in decimal is going to have the value 12. Now this is familiar to us, so we can go ahead and add these. Now 16 squared, as we found out earlier, it is 256. Now multiplying that with 10 will give us 2560. 
Coming to the next one, we are multiplying 16 raised to the power 1, which is essentially 16 with 11. So we will get the value 176, isn't it? Coming to the next one, 16 raised to the power 0, which is essentially 1, we are multiplying that with 12. So we will have 12 only. Now if we add these three up, we will have the result 2748, and that's the equivalent decimal of the hexadecimal number ABC. So remember, whenever we are dealing with these symbols, that is the ones which are not from 0 to 9, we will have to convert them first into our familiar form. Then we can only proceed ahead so that we can find out the equivalent decimal value. So this is all about how hexadecimal numbers can be converted into decimal numbers. So in this session, we covered the topics, conversion from binary to decimal, and the conversion from hexadecimal to decimal. All right, people, that will be all for this session. In the next session, we are going to learn about the conversion from decimal number system. So I hope to see you in the next one. Thank you all for watching.